Hello and welcome to the show. I am back on automation today, going to be building, well, another hopefully quite crazy car. Since I last played this game, a whole heap of new body styles have been added to the Unreal Engine version of the game. Some going all the way back to the, well, early 40s, in fact. So we've got some really old classic styles of bodies. We've got things like a Mini, for example. We've got the uh, Pantera. We've got a kind of Mitsubishi Starion style looking thing as well. There's all sorts. <laughs> There's all sorts of stuff added, which is very, very nice to see. You know, more different types of cars you can build and more stuff to generally play around with. What I am going to do is go to the real classic end of the spectrum. We are going to go as far back as we can, which is in fact 1946, and using basically the, the minimum technology level that I possibly can on here, try to build as exciting a car as I possibly can. So naturally, we're going to have a choice of either the 46 Coupe or the 45 Convertible. There's two versions of the Convertible. I, you've got kind of a long a very long-nosed one, or a much smaller car. So you can fit a much bigger engine, of course, in the longer-nosed vehicle, but it will be larger and heavier. So we're going to go for the small car, and we are going to see what I can do with it. We're going to try... I say we're going to try and make it as, as fast as possible. I'm not expecting it to be horrendously powerful or horrendously quick, because, as I said, we are working with the very minimum of technology, but hopefully for that era I can make something relatively exciting. Um, we're not going to go with aluminium, we'll go with steel on this one, and uh, likewise we'll go with a ladder chassis. It's going to be basic, but that's <laughs> it's, 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 made, it's going to be equivalent to made in 1946, so yeah, I'm not sure quite what else you would expect. Uh, let's go for galvanised. Galvanised steel is a little bit better option. We can only have a front longitudinal, we can only have double wishbone suspension at the front. For the rear, we can have... Solid axle coil, solid axle leaf, semi-trailing. We want sportiness, though, and of course none of these are particularly... Well, I say none of these are particularly sporty. Semi-trailing arm is better, double wishbone is the best option we have in terms of sportiness and comfort and tameness, which are the categories, the characteristics we are looking for in a <laughs> sporty 40s car. So we will take that one. Ooh, that looks really cool. <laughs> So you can have different styles of uh, bodywork, uh, sort of variants. I wasn't expecting it. That's really, I really like that. That is a really cool, really cool piece of uh, bodywork, I guess. I, I like the look of that car, so we'll take that. Can we change? We can. Okay, we've got to make the, the boots smaller or longer. I don't know whether we need to really extend the wheel arches out that much. Normally I do to get bigger tyres in the car. But there's so much space in there already, I can probably still get huge tyres on it anyway. And the rest of it, I am generally quite... I mean, the, the rest of the stuff you're already changing is sort of minor. Uh, so, yeah, generally pretty happy with the look of this vehicle. And, of course, it must come in orange, the most important of the uh, <laughs> colours. Right. Um, oh, actually, thinking of colours, something I did want to uh, cover briefly. There is a whole bunch of new options if you like to painting different parts now i don't know how it's going to work on this body style not all the body styles can do a huge amount on this one here no it's apparently not really making a huge difference let's go paint everything back to orange uh, a bonnet for example you can paint in bright pink if you are so inclined uh, we'll go and re redo it all into orange but uh yeah with certain other different body styles and so on you can do a lot more in terms of playing around with uh Different options for painting, and likewise, when it comes to the fitments, these two have got a whole variety of options of, of painting of various bits of material, and so on. So, yeah, there's more more freedom, again, to mess around with various bits and pieces with your vehicles, which is always good. I mean, a game about being creative, the more creative options it gives you, the better it is. I was kind of tempted to not go for circle headlights, I'll be honest, and continue to build... Uh, <laughs> Strange looking cars. However, when, when you've got the front end of a vehicle looking like this, it kind of seems a, a shame not to go for some circle some circle headlights. So they will go in there. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the grille of this vehicle. It's not such a huge... In fact, from some angles, it kind of looks a bit like a, a Volkswagen Carmen gear. I mean, the, the, just, just the very, very front bit, I don't know, kind of does remind me of it. And the rest of it, of course, absolutely not, but the <laughs> front bit, just a smidge. Uh, shall we go make a happy car? 
I have a I have a, a habit of making just happy looking. Oh, Jesus, this is a very happy car. <laughs> That is a very, very excited car. All right, if we put that down, there we go. <laughs> it's so cheerful. I love it. That's staying. It's easy. I, I was going to get over what to do with the front, but no, I've decided we are going to have the <laughs> happiest, happiest looking car since the Sprite. Uh, it might even be happier looking than the Sprite. And what else are we going to do with the back? As cool as this body style is, it actually makes it a bit awkward as to what in the hell do we do with the back of the car. Uh, we need some tail lights. So what are we going to do? I'm not sure any of these are going to particularly work on this uh, on this sort of a on this sort of a car. Uh, they kind of have funny clipping. I think it's where it's catch. Uh, oh yeah, it's kind of where it's catching the the wheel arch. It's having issues with that tail light, so we're not going to use that. I guess we've kind of got to go really back to the uh, back to the circled lights. They seem to be doing their job. Those get really far indented into the bodywork, though. I don't really like. It's okay to an extent, like a little bit, but when it's going back that far, the, yeah, that's mm, not such a fan of that. Although I think it might be the best option that I have. Uh, also, what are the other new changes? I was quickly playing around with this that is a little bit irritating. Is so if we grab, let's just grab this bit. Okay, so this sort of a uh, a grill piece. If I wanted to put that in there, you see the actual. I guess item is in yellow. It kind of shows the depth of the item. But the problem is when you're trying to line that up to go next to something, it's really difficult to see where said end of component actually is and what is just looking at it from a different angle and, and showing the depth of it. I find, and it might only be me, but I find it very, very difficult at times to judge, like if you, especially if you just hover over it, like where is the edge? Because that... I don't think I've got the cursor turned on, so that's not going to help you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, where the edge of the prop is is, of course, not necessarily where the edge of the highlighted box is. So when you're moving it around, unless you have the camera in a certain angle, it's very, very difficult at times to see. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of that. There might be a way to turn it off. I haven't found one. I might be being stupid, but to me, yeah, that's quite awkward to to work with. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, let's go back to the finishing the back of the car. I'm not sure about the back, but I'm also not sure how I can make it look better. It's one of those annoying, annoying bits where I just don't quite know what I can do to uh, improve said vehicle. I don't know why I would have a vent at the back of the car, but I guess trying to add just something to the very large amount of blank space that we have at the back of the vehicle. I guess we could add a number plate in there as well to... Uh, try and give us just something a little bit more interesting almost down there so we have a number plate on the back and then on the front we can have a number plate but unfortunately this is going to look weird because it's going to sort of dig it into the car yeah <laughs> not sure about that <laughs> there would be a number plate at the front the back i'm i'm kind of more okay with now yeah it's good enough good enough for me uh, we're not going to bother with wings and spoilers, etc. on this or any of those. Uh, fuel cap, we will need one of those somewhere around. Actually, let's go for a nice simple one over here. That'll do. And door handles, yeah, that's quite important. It's uh, quite, quite necessary to get in and out of a car. Uh, we'll stick some there. These are tiny doors on this vehicle. It's such, and this is the smaller version. It's still such a massive bonnet on this car. We can have mirrors, and we can now have mirrors and place them kind of... Uh, which mirrors is that? I think that's a shape that I want. We can place the mirrors actually on the front now because the things don't come pre-installed with wing mirrors on. Even better. There we go. It's looking the part. It's definitely looking the part. They are red, which I don't quite know why they are red. Uh, maybe change... Ah, there we go. That's the colour we wanted to change to orange. Perfect. There we go. Our car is taking shape nicely. Do we want anything else? Um, not really worried about any of those. Oh, aerials. I kind of want, like, one of the big, almost remote control car antennas coming out the side of it for proper classic, uh, classic car, but it's not going <laughs> to... I don't think it's gonna, we're going to be able to find those yet. And uh, I think... Are we going to... Like, oh, okay, we can kind, kind of. That's new. Haven't seen that one before. That's going to... That, that'll do. That will kind of do. Oh. Uh, maybe not at that angle, though. 
<laughs> no, that, that's a. Uh, um, is that going to be any. Okay, that's just like a little thin one. Go away. I don't want that. We do want that, though. Uh, I can't really have that coming out of the side because I can't have it going up at a straight enough angle. So we're going to go and stick it on the roof because that's about the only. Mm, I'm not sure I like it up there either. Go away. Uh, so if we get out of the back, we'll have a tail. <laughs> We will, we will have a tail. Uh, I kind of want it on the side, but I want it on the side, not leaning that way. I want it going straight up. But that doesn't look like that's an option, so... Bugger it. Go away. Fine. Fine. Screw you. Uh, oh, exhausts work differently as well now. When you go to add the exhaust on the vehicle, you actually have the thing. And it doesn't have to be placed on the bodywork itself. It can be placed elsewhere. Uh, with the kind of height of it, again, trying to get perception and figuring out where where it's going to sit is a little bit on the uh, weird side, I, I tend to find. Trying to figure out quite where you are in relation to everything around is... Yeah, again, it's just nothing I find a little bit awkward to work with. I'll probably get used to it, though, the more that I, the more that I play. There we go, we've got a couple, couple of exhausts at the back. Right, our vehicle, the happiest, the happiest car in the world, is ready to go. Naturally, I think a V8 is a good place to start. You can't go wrong with a <laughs> with a V8 here, um, and it's going to fit in the car. We're not going to go quite for a V12. We'll go for a V8. It's going to be a cast iron V8 naturally. Uh, we have got push rod direct acting overhead cam. We can go for overhead cam, dual overhead cams, and so on. Uh, we're going to probably want. Let's go for direct acting overhead cam. We can only get two valves. Uh, we're not going to go too crazy on the technology front, but I do want to go a bit better than than push rod if we can. What size V8? Is there any? I'm kind of surprised it doesn't come up with a size limit. Twelve litre, uh, no, ten and a half litre V8. Uh, on a, there we go. Ten point eight litre V8. No, we're not going to go quite that crazy. Um, I am kind of yeah surprised. This is uh, not coming up with any sizing because the. I mean, while it wasn't the smallest engine bay I've worked with, also not exactly the largest. Uh, shall we go for about four and a half litre V8? Yeah, okay. It's kind of fairly, again, for this sort of era, fairly small engine, four and a half litres. Well, we might come back and change that. We will see. Okay, so <laughs> technology options. We have got cast, or cast or heavy duty. We're probably going to want a heavy... Uh, do we want heavy duty for more torque, but be severely limited in terms of RPM? Let's go for heavy duty again. We can change it later on. And again, if we go heavy duty, it will give us more torque, but less RPM. We're probably not going to be having that many RPMs anyway. Let's be honest here. We're not going to have 10,000 RPM from this particular engine. No options to play around with turbos. Uh, we can go for single barrel... Ooh, single barrel. Okay, hold on a second. Maximum power 225, that's 290. Okay, I was wondering what the difference between eco and, and normal is to how come we can't get a quad carburetor with a non-eco one, but this one's more powerful. So naturally, that's what I want to go. Performance, intake. So we're not quite going to go for a full race car, race car, but we want performance. Uh, I don't actually know which this, these two is better. I would guess maybe super leaded? It's better... Than, I mean, is the low quality unleaded or just crappy quality fuel? I don't know. We're going to go super. <laughs> super quality leaded. And we're, well, we're again, we're not going to be pushing out more than 400 horsepower from this engine. <laughs> if we do, I'd be amazed. Let's get some dual exhaust on the go. No option, of course, for catalytic converter. Far too old. Do we want... Uh, again, I mean, I guess we're not going to have any issues with... Uh, because these are say like max powers in the 260. I guess we might. Uh, so we might. I don't know. Okay, at the moment we've got a busted engine. So let's go and put this all the way. Wow, bloody hell! That's getting. Okay, that's getting more power than I expected without me having to tinker around too much. We also need to massively reduce the RPM limit. There we go. Engine is happy. It goes to about 4,000 RPM. So it's a little bit of a. Let's say a bit of a lazy engine. It's always going to be. It's uh, oh, careful now. We might be getting a clear 200 odd horsepower out of this, which is quite cool. <laughs> Okay, uh, cam profile. Woo, look at that! We're up to 223 horsepower from our 1946 car. Can we get... No, okay, we can't, can't go that way anymore with that. Um, 
that's a lot more power than I was expecting to be <laughs> to be able to extract from this engine. If we go, okay, so we go any richer on that. Two thirty. We've got pretty good torque as well. Two hundred and seventy-four torque is not too shabby. It's not too shabby. I mean, admittedly, yeah, sure, it is a four and a half liter V eight engine, but to be getting this much out of it is not bad going. Uh, can we do anything with the exhaust? Uh, nope. Sometimes tinkering around with this, you can find yourself at a, a better... What happens if we get rid of th those? Yeah, sometimes tinkering around with these, we can get a little bit better power out of it. That's more like it. 235. Who needs silencers? Nobody cares. It's 1946. Um, performance? I don't know. I never really paid enough attention to care about the... Um, uh, like the, how the performance index value is is to my previous build. It might even be a new um, measurement that I've not seen before. So uh, in, okay, so that does really need to because the amount of torque that we've got going through this, I can't run it in lower with lower um, pistons and so on. So yeah, we can't try and get any more RPMs out of it. Two hundred and thirty-six horsepower. Oh, do we want more torque or do we want more power? Uh, right, there was a nice sweet spot in there. Compression, can we do anything with you? Oh, that's the... Uh, that's a... This is a very, very fine, very fine line between getting it to, to work and not... Uh, which I'm trying to remember which way around it is. Uh, if we lower the ignition timing, we can then up the compression. Is that the way? Or is it the other way around? Uh, mm, I can't remember. I did... Just before I started filming, I had a little play around to try and remember these little things. And I have apparently immediately forgot them. As I've started recording, wow, that breaks it very, very quickly. And 220, 2.29, I think we lost a little bit of torque in... Uh, have we lost a little bit of torque in all of this? Possibly, in my quest for power. In my quest for horsepower, we might have lost a little bit of torque from the engine. But, there we go. As we go for a race. Uh, <laughs> eh, I guess we go for a race intake to give us a few more. Oh, that's where we were like 234. I think I managed to cock something up along the way. It's quite possible. Because we were like 236 at one point. Uh, 230 horsepower. Can we go any more out of this? Not really at the moment. Yeah, I think I have managed to cock this one up. My bad. <laughs> Cocked it up a little bit. I'm already talking a few horsepower. Jesus, there we go. 231. Perfect. What happens if we go then? Should we go start going bigger with the old engine? Well, I guess we can. We can go to kind of 5 litre. 5 litre V8 of 244 horsepower. Uh, we can keep going crazier and crazier with the uh, with the old engine. There we go. 5 litre V8, 256 horsepower, 300 torque. I was not expecting that level of power out of it. I'll be honest. There probably is now bits I can change here because I've fiddled around with other stuff and so on. But I'm, I'm going to... Well, Christ, I'm going to get back to... There we go. 257. Everything's in the green. Everything's fine. Um... Required cooling is about 300. I think we should have that on the car with the giant grill at the front. Uh, fuel economy is terrible, but again, it didn't really matter in this period. We've got engine complete. Happy. Happy with that as an, oh, and an engine. Have we got anything we can do with this? Probably not. No, that was about spot on there. So we are good. I've left the quality slide in the middle just for the sake of money. Try and keep it vaguely affordable. Ooh. Oh. Shall we go? God, I forgot how loud this game is. Jeez. Okay, I'm just going to turn my speakers down. I've got to <laughs> remember to uh, make sure what I'm editing really turn this bit down in terms of volume. All right, what does our beautiful 40s engine sound like? I like it. I do like it very much. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with that as an engine. It's a real growly engine we've got in this. Uh, for our little sports car, that is not the sound you expect to come out of it. And I am perfectly fine with that. Excellent. Uh, we, can, we can go longitudinal 4x4 if we want. No, we want rear-wheel drive. We want a manual gearbox. We want a four-speed. I mean, I'm kind of tempted just to push this as far as we can. It reckons it'll do 248 miles an hour. Yes. We've got to go for the 100, uh, not 200, uh, sorry, 148 miles an hour. We've got to try and go for the 148 or 150 if we can. Uh, we can only have an open diff or a manual locker, which would be for off-roading. So open diff it is. Spacing, we might have to come back and tinker around with that sort of stuff if we want. Of course, we've not got off-road tyres. We're not going to be running on semi-slicks on this. I guess we're going to go for... 
uh, medium compound, perhaps. We really need to get some bigger tire widths. Now, I was expecting it to allow me to put bigger tire, maybe because we need some bigger wheels on the car, maybe? Hmm. Tire diameter, maybe we need to get some bigger tire diameter. There definitely, again, there definitely was a way to do this, however, okay, we want to get, at least get the wheels. <laughs> Just go, <laughs> what is with the funnel? What is with the funnel? Uh, let's get that back in there. Maybe, maybe the issue is that there's something to do with these older cars. I can't have bigger tyres, but I feel like I should be able to have, oh, I've now really buggered it all up. How have I done that? How the hell, by making that small, whoa. like I, I kind of making these smaller and then making them bigger and then it's fixing stuff. I kind of still want it to be, yeah, why is it doing that? I think maybe because I'm being cheeky, essentially, with some of this. Maybe if we make that bit smaller. And then now, you see, that's only back, I can't figure out any rhyme or reason as to why this is suddenly, sometimes letting me have 165s. And then sometimes no. I I, I would I want much bigger tires on this car. I feel like it should be able to, but for some reason it's not always letting me have much bigger tires on it. Hmm. Okay, we'll go we'll go with this because I don't want to upset it any more than it already is. Uh, so <laughs> there we go. Uh, do I not have a option to change the rim style? Do I have to go all the way back? I thought it used to come later on, but maybe I'd have to go back if I want to change them. Uh, we can only have drum brakes. That's a little bit concerning. Uh, I want big drum brakes. If we're going to be doing 150 miles an hour in this, please have big brakes. <laughs> please try and stop the thing. Otherwise, this is going to be a terrifying death trap. I think it already is a terrifying death trap. Let's face it. 150 mile an hour in a road car in 1946 is a lot of speed. It's a lot of speed. We're not off-road. We're not going to have any active aero going on. Uh... I'm not sure four seats would fit, so we're going to go for two. We're going to go for two. Uh, shall we go for shall we go for a little bit of luxury? We'll go for a little bit of luxury inside. Uh, none of the aids, standard 40 suspension. Uh, this is a muscle car. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. Oh, we can't. Literally, there, there's no options for stuff. Shall we go for race? Shall we go for sport, comfort? I'm just kind of curious as to how these settings uh, affect the... Um, the vehicle in terms of its class. So making it making it off-road suspension makes it closer to being a muscle car than sports is sure, whatever. Uh, <laughs> race apparently makes it rather uncomfortable. Uh, we'll go we'll go with sport. So we have steering, 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 and then a million miles of understeer? Okay, so if we then go we shouldn't have a million miles of understeer. Not from wait, wait hold on. Ah, of course we want to go minus, don't we, with camber. We should not have a million miles of understeer in a car this powerful. Well, maybe not five degrees of camber. Um, let's go for a little bit more, though. Uh, ride height. Make the car nice and low. I don't, I'm kind of confused as to why this would be... Apparently making the car higher makes the car more muscly. Look at that, we're going to 76% in the muscle category. Uh, drivability. The well, drivability factor of this is going to be real, real difficult. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be really difficult because it is... It does reckon it's going to do 144 miles an hour. That's pretty cool. It's got a lot of power in real basic suspension, and I don't have any. I, don't, I have no options as to what I can change in all of this. The brakes are going to be terribly difficult. Oh, of course, I keep forgetting. We have to make the brakes worse to make the car better as a muscle car. <laughs> that is a thing. That is a thing. Uh, so if we put this back down, and this is just comfort. This is yeah, just dealing with comfort stuff. I don't really want any brake fade if I can help it. So we'll put it up over there. Brake bias. I'm just kind of seeing how this changes uh, with everything. Uh, we'll probably st stick with it around there. Uh, maybe if we have quality of tyres a bit better, that would be nice. That's freaking out the graphs. Actually, making it more expensive. Not really changing much of no. Did we go for some longer gears? And I think we're about aero limited to 140-ish miles an hour on this. Um, wheel spin is at 29.5%. Yeah, I'd say I agree with that. With that <laughs> much power going through the car, I would not be a pro surprised whatsoever. 
Top speed, I reckon, is 145 miles an hour. Uh, 0 to 60 is 11.9 seconds. Um, not the greatest 0 to 60 time from a car. I think that's mostly down to the wheel spin and the crappy tyres that I can't seem to improve on here. I would, I, I really want much. <laughs> I really want much bigger tires on this. So if we have, wait, I don't know if we have a really tiny rim diameter. Does that mean I can get as bigger tires as possible? There we go. Tiny rim diameter means bigger tires. Now makes it much more like a muscle car. Still makes it horrendously, horrendously understeery. Yeah, understeery rather than massively oversteery. But it's increased the drivability a fair bit, and that should now be good. Not 60 time has come down to eight seconds. Which, again, the 0-60 time on this car is better than on a MX-5. Okay, yeah, this does have more power, but it's also probably a lot heavier. It's made on ancient suspension and ancient tyres. How heavy is it? Uh, do we have a... we must have a weight. There we go. Yeah, weight 1,000... okay, it's 1,100 kilos, so maybe a smidge heavier than an MX-5. But, of course, it's got ter terribly ancient suspension and tyres and everything to try and put said power down onto the road. Should be fairly aerodynamic, fairly aerodynamic on this. So yeah, I am. Um, I quite like this car. I quite like this car indeed. Uh, detail was it com comparative? Oh God, no. Where is the overview? Oh, markets. There we go. Yeah. So markets. It is apparently a a muscle car. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Does it have any market? Okay. So yeah, it can be market. It can't be marketed here very well. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it there, but in these two places, Gas Gasmia and Fru Fruini Fru Fruina, I don't know, I can't pronounce stuff, my bad. Uh, we have got, uh, yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent market share for muscle. If we make it really cheap, everyone wants to buy it, and then that's not selling it for very much money. But yeah, I've essentially built a classic British muscle car here. <laughs> Which I am fine with. I am fine with indeed. Let's go send you around. The oh, have we got the old air... Oh, we've got the airfield back. Good old Top Gear airfield. I wasn't expecting that one to be back. I don't have my list of Top Gear times ready to go. Uh, where is my phone? Have I got my, I've got my phone on me? Right. Carl, you go and rumble your way around here. And I've got to go try and find... I'm not prepared, okay? I wasn't expecting this to still be working. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't necessarily expecting this to be added. All right, let's have a look for Top Gear... Uh, lap times. It does. I am uh, glad to say it sounds fantastic. Sounds fantastic indeed. All right, have we got? Aha! Here we go. I've got a list of lap times. It might be a little bit out of date. I'm not actually. Yeah, that's an out of date list because it doesn't even have the wire on it. God damn it! I don't have. All right, this is what is going to what is going to uh, be done first. Can I find the lap times before the? car has finished its uh, lap. I think I might have possibly found a better list. That one looks correct. Right, vehicle is coming through. Uh, again, don't know how comparable this is. If you built an identical car and, and so on, and the distance of this track, etc. But it's just a little bit of fun to compare them. There we go. It's around the final corner. A 143.1. It's not up there with the Wara that did a 113, however, <laughs> however, oh crap, are we going to, my phone's now having issues, oh yeah, it, the, and the web page is terrible, you know what, I'm not, I'm not sure, oh god damn it, <laughs> he's, wanting me, he's wanting me to scroll through the, every bloody individual, I say every individual page, but uh, this one here might be a better, slight better list. Let's just scroll down to the look at the 40s. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a long way down. So, a 43-1. Uh, a 43-1 would be... In fact, it's actually slower than the standard Renault Aventine. I did a 142.5. So, I mean, it's not massively, massively quick. Uh, it's faster than Aston Martin DB5, interestingly. The DB5 is 146.0, so it is some three seconds faster than a DB5, which, considering the age of the car, you know, is a much more comparable rival, perhaps. Uh, yeah, not massively quick. Not massively quick vehicle compared to modern cars, but for a car in 1946, I mean, to be able to do 145 miles an hour would be absurd. It would be absolutely absurd. So... <laughs> 
Yeah. It looks a bit silly with the wheels, but that's just kind of how I've had to make it so that it does what I want it to. Uh, yeah, have we, oh, oh, this is the last the last test of there, so I'm going to try. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's it's happier with it being giant there. Ah, there we go. Now I've got two o fives on the bloody car. That's more like it. Now we're going to be a lot quicker, aren't we? <laughs> Basically, we make everything. Uh, I'm not sure that's quite how it should work. I feel like there should be better ways around it, but either way, we've got it drivable. Looks dopey, but it's much more drivable than it was before. And now we've got the 0-60 time in under 8 seconds. Top speed is a little bit less, I guess, from the added resistance, the added friction. But uh, there we go. Our 40s sports car is a lot faster than I was expecting it to be. That much is, uh, is for sure. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much. For watching and until next time uh, goodbye